okay so students today we will see what is network diagrams in project management okay and this uh, is a part of theory also and this can serve as your last lab also so please listen carefully now as we have been discussing project management is a very very important uh tool used in industries so that you know all the activities of the project they happen on time and they happen <clears throat> with the required quality parameters okay so in order to think achieve things on time network diagrams are very important okay so we will see what these network diagrams are so these these network diagrams look something like this okay so here you can see uh, each of them is a start point there is a node and this node has various attributes okay these are various activities basically that are happening okay and each of them has various attributes in terms of numbers and there are some interdependencies between activities that is also seen and then there is a finish okay so that is also quite important okay so this is how essentially a network diagram looks like but we are going to discuss them in detail okay so we'll start off with the first one what is that yeah the first important thing is the activities uh themselves okay so in order to finish a project you are having something called a work breakdown structure right what's a work breakdown structure the work breakdown structure you are essentially breaking down the work into smaller bits okay so we've, st we've studied that right we have to break the wor work into small small bits and those small bits can be called as activities individual activities and those activities are named as a b c d on and so on so forth okay so all of these are the activities now when we see various activities so one has to understand that not all activities happen at the same time for example when you are building constructing a, a building you have to have you know the foundation laying work first then on top of that the rcc work comes floor by floor okay and then after the rcc is done then the wall making is done after the wall making is done uh you know after each and every slab is done you know wall making is completed then other details like you know plumbing lines electrical lines will be laid out okay so now plumbing lines can't be laid out till the rcc work is over so there is a dependency right so activities are many times interdependent on each other one activity can be started only after the other activity is finished you have to understand that right uh, so this interdependency has to be noted down so therefore every activity has to have a predecessor or the activity if it does not have a predecessor it can start at the beginning of the project right so for example you know your uh, you know uh, works related to foundation right making the periphery of the building and then starting to dig they can happen parallel right? <clears throat> so some activities can happen parallelly others will require some predecessors so if there is no predecessor you just put a dash right if there is a predecessor then you write down what it is for example for activity c to start a must be finished for activity d to start there are activities a and b both have to be finished for activity e one must ensure that d is finished that means a and b also must be finished for activity f c and e must be finished right so what does it mean c and e must be finished so that means activity a and activity d must be finished that means activity a b and uh, you know c and d must be finished actually right so that is activity f and then finally activity g requires e to be finished 
Now, <coughs> once this interdependency is noted, one has to understand that you also must need to calculate the time. Correct. It is not necessary that uh, uh, all activities have similar times. Each activity is unique activity, and the unique activity may have require different amounts of finishing time. Right. So therefore, one has to consider all of this while going ahead with the network diagrams. Okay. So here you can see we have written down in detail. What have we written down? We have written down the time required for activity A, time required for activity B, time required for activity C, and so on and so forth, till the time required for activity G. Okay. So now this is a table, but the point is a table can only help you so much. You need something like a proper network diagram, a diagram to illustrate this interdependencies and to connect it with start and finish points. And so what you are seeing here is exactly that. Right? So you have a start point and you have a finish point. Okay. So activity A and B have no predecessors. So from the start directly one branch and other branch is starting. That means two activities starting parallelly. Activity A and B can start parallelly. For activity C, what is required? A should be complete. So activity C, A is required to be complete. And here you can see this is the line. Okay. So only after A is finished, then activity C can begin. Activity D also requires not only A to finish, but also B to finish. Both must finish. Then only activity D can start. So then from for activity D, you need A to be finished first or, or whatever, you know, whatever finish first doesn't matter. But A and B both must be complete. Only then activity D will be uh, started. Okay. So that is the dependency. So that's how you note it down. How do you note it down? So you write down two arrows from A to D. That means A must be finished as well as B must be finished. Then D can be. For activity E, D must be finished. So single arrow. For activity F, C and E must be finished. So you've got a pointing arrows from C, pointing arrows from E. And then for activity G, E must be finished. For activity G, you have a pointing, single pointing arrow, E. And then after G, what happens? You finish it off. So also after F, what happens? You reach the finish point. So this is giving a very, very clear understanding okay, of uh, how these activities have interdependencies and the diagrammatic view really makes the whole thing very, very clear. <laughs> now, there are a few more things that are important. Okay. And those are related with the timelines. Okay. So one, it is one thing to basically just go ahead and, uh, you know, describe the dependency activities, but most important is what is the ultimate timeline of the project. Okay. So therefore these four <laughs> concepts have to be introduced now. What are these four concepts? earliest to start, earliest finish, latest to start and latest finish. Okay. So now what is the earliest start? It is the earliest time at which a particular, uh, uh, a particular type of, uh, you know, a, a particular activity can get started and earliest finish is the earliest the activity can be finished. Similarly, latest start is the latest the activity can be started and latest finish is the latest time by which uh, you can finish the activity. So I'll explain to you the uh, significance of this. But first, what you have to do is you have to draw such a 
table at each node okay what you have to do you have to draw a table at each node and when you draw a table at each node you have to uh write all of these four points okay so i'll just explain that in just a bit so as soon as i finish this okay so we have made the blank table now so here you can see what is the table right earliest to start and then you got earliest finish then you got latest start got latest finish so we will have called something called a forward pass okay where we will see how the activities are happening uh looking from left to right okay so we'll just explain that in a minute okay so tell me what is the earliest start for activity a okay so the answer is very simple activity a can start immediately because it has obviously no predecessors okay so you can start the activity a at point number 0 okay so you can start the activity a at point number 0 okay so i'll just erase unnecessary notations <coughs> okay so you can start this at point 0 okay you can start this at week 0 b can you start this at week 0 answer is yes so you know if, if you you'll just have to pay attention for the next 5 minute carefully because we are doing this calculations if you want to participate you can also join in next is what is the ef ef stands for earliest finish okay so earliest finish is how much earliest finish will be the time required for the activity which is written down here 7 right so 0 plus 7 is 7 so here you can see activity a can finish earliest at 7 weeks time activity b can finish earliest at what time at point Uh, at week 9 okay why because it takes 9 weeks so 0 plus 9 equal 9 okay so now this is the earliest start for a and b and similarly earliest finish now let us go to activity c activity c can start at 0 week yes no answer is no right you have to have the activity a finished because here you have see the dependencies on activity a right so you have to have the activity a finished so you can start this earliest at 7 weeks after 7 weeks are done right and uh after 7 weeks are done you still need how many weeks to finish this 12 weeks so earliest you can finish this activity is at which time 12 plus 7 Nineteen weeks. Okay, so answer is what? Nineteen. Okay, so that is so. This is behaving a little weird. Okay, so here you have got nineteen. Twelve plus. Seven. Okay. Now, <coughs> activity D. Activity D depends upon what A as well as B. Okay. So, when can you start this? Can you start this at week seven, or can you start this at week nine? Because both activities there are interdependencies. If you start this activity at week seven, what is the problem? Activity B is still not finished. Right. So, therefore, the problem is that. you will not be able to start activity d so you must wait till the slower of the two activities so answer is what answer is 9 okay so activity d finishes can only start at week 9 and 8 plus 9 you will have 
17. Okay. So here you can see the earliest it can finish is at week 17. Okay. So, okay. The earliest you can finish this activity is at week number 17. Hmm. Now you go to the next one. What is the next answer? Next is, uh, oops, just a second. Yeah. Your activity E. Activity E depends only on D, right? So you can start it at which week? You start it at week 17. Okay, so we will write down 17 here. Okay, now you need 17 plus 9. How many? 9 weeks, right? So you need till week 26. Okay, for this activity to finish. Now, activity F depends upon C as well as E. Okay, so this activity cannot start. So slower of the two is what? Activity E. So you can start this only at week number 26. Okay. So we can start this at activity only after E is finished. So we'll call this 26. Okay. It's 26. And then this activity will take six weeks more to finish. So it will finish at week 32. Okay. So it will activity is finishing at week 32. Now, uh, here you can see activity G, which only depends upon E. Okay. So you got 20. Uh, 6 as the week number because that is where E activity finishes. Okay. So then you require how many weeks? 26 plus 5. That is 31. Okay. 31 weeks to get this over with. Okay. So now tell me when will the project finish? Okay. The project will finish at week 31 or week 32. So answer is week 32. Okay. So the project will only finish when the entire uh, project is uh, finished. That entire project finishes at <coughs> week 32. Okay. So it is the slower of the two activities. Okay. That will be basically go on this. So it takes five weeks to finish. So 26 to 31. Yeah. Now we have to. So this is called the forward pass. Okay. So you got the seven weeks, zero plus seven. And then you've got the nine weeks activity for B. Then after that, uh, seven plus 12, 19 for C. And then D becomes nine plus eight, 17. And then after that, 17 plus nine becomes 26. And this is how the entire forward pass calculation has been done. Okay. So here 26 and 6, 32 weeks is the final time. Now we will try to fill in what is the latest finish and latest start. So the latest finish time for this entire project is 32. Okay. So this activity can also get finished by 32 weeks. Right. Then the project will not be delayed. So we'll write down latest finish. Okay. The latest finish will be called as. Uh, week 32. Okay, so answer is here. So it will be week 32. Okay, so week 32 is the latest finish. So this also can get finished by week 32. Okay, now if it has to get finished by 32, when does it have to start? So answer here will be what? Answer will be here. It has to start by week 26, right? So therefore, here 
the there is no difference right <laughs> between earlier start early finish late start late finish there so therefore there is no slack here so obviously there is no slack here if you have to finish activity in week 32 you can start this by latest by what week 27 right you can start this by week 27 you still have 5 weeks you will finish by week 32 okay. so therefore you will find that there is a difference between the latest start and earliest start by one week there is some slack okay ideally you should start it at week 26 but chalo ek week del delay ho gaya to bhi chalta hai okay so that is the understanding of this so so far so good so now now the thing is what is the latest start for activity e because activity e uh, basically is pointing to two activities activity e points to f as well as g right okay so um which activity it has to what will be the latest finish time of this will it be 27 or 26 okay so the answer here is if you put 27 what will happen the 27 would get percolated here and 27 plus 6 would become 33 which will cause a delay here so you have to put the lesser of the two times right here while in the forward pass you have to put the greater of the two times uh slower of the two here you have to put the faster of the two because that's your deadline so again you see here week 26 is exactly where you have to do this activity you have to complete this entire activity right? so that leaves absolutely no sack so therefore earliest uh, latest start also has to be week 17 itself okay so only if you put uh, 26 here okay at e only then <clears throat> you can afford to start f on time Okay, that is a week 26. Hmm. Now come back in coming back here. Hmm. So here you can see that uh, you you have to uh, this activity points D points to E. So this activity must be finished by week number 26. Okay. Okay. Now <clears throat> just a second, students. will erase this yeah so this activity has to uh, finish before this activity starts so again this activity has to finish by what week week number 17 okay only then this activity will get started on time okay so here again you have to start this uh, latest time you can start this activity is week 9 okay now here comes the interesting part for activity c you can finish it by week 26 also because when you finish it by 26 you will still be in, uh, following the deadline right so the latest uh, start latest finish of this activity this eraser is giving some issues okay so the latest that you can actually start this activity now uh, latest you can finish this activity is by week 26 okay. so here you can put 26 okay but this takes how many weeks only 12 weeks to complete so 26 minus 12 is what week 14 the latest start time will be what week 14 okay so you can start this at week number 14 and take 12 weeks and still you will be done by week 26 so what do you see here the earliest start time and the latest start time has a slack okay so so that slack is of how much weeks is actually of seven weeks that's a huge time right so and the person who has uh, chosen activity number c he can <coughs> choose to finishes activity uh, at a you know at a leisurely pace okay. so therefore you can the latest start is week number 14 now again here activity b and d there is dependency okay so here you can start this activity when latest you can finish the activities by ninth week because if you will delay it anymore what is going to happen 
you are going to have delay in other future activities now again you get two dependencies here okay activity c activity d okay so when do you uh, what is the latest finish for activity a you can finish it by week 14 or you can finish it by week 9 so answer is you have to finish it by the the lesser of the two okay you have to finish it by week 9 why when you finish it by week 9 then you are ensuring that activity d doesn't get delayed okay so that has to be kept in mind okay so here you can see this is activity number uh, week has to be finished nine uh, you have to finish it by week number nine and therefore you have to start it by week number two okay so here again you will see that uh, you will be able to finish this activity uh, or you have some slack here okay and what is the slack the difference between the earliest start and the latest start time the slack here is two okay so in this way you have to uh, basically populate the table of the with the help of the forward and the back backward pass hmm. so this is how you get the you know uh, the, the activities uh, timelines freeze now there is something called as the critical path okay what is the critical path it is the path which has zero slack okay that means that is uh, the path uh, which is most critical that means if there are delays on that path it will cause a sure shot delay in your entire project okay so your start uh, critical path will be the ones which have zero slack okay so b and d and e and then f and then finish okay so that is the critical path so where activities b d e f are the ones which have absolutely zero slack other activities a c and g have slack of two seven and one weeks you know so they will not form the critical path why critical path is necessary because it is um, you know uh, any delay on this path will cause delay in the entire project okay so so this is actually the the shortest possible path for the finishing of the project on time you can't finish project faster than this hmm? and uh, you know if there is some delays in these path then the projects will get further delayed okay so this is basically what you have to do um, by filling this type of a table okay so i mean you can do as i have done i can share you this slide you can annotate on the slide and uh, based on that you can you know uh, submit uh, this project and you can write a comment also at the end saying that uh, what is uh, the earliest start and the latest start what is the um, earliest finish and the latest finish times okay so this is uh, what i wanted to share with you this is a very important aspect in project management and it will help every um, every person uh, who is basically uh, working into project management okay so thank you students uh, <clears throat> we will pause here for today thank you so much thank you sir, thank you, sir.